to my channel. Today we are playing Lucid Night. Last time we finished up the amusement park and Ruby made her move. On her way back, we were stopped by the police officer and uh, kind of lost her memories and said some things that made it suspicious that the Yama has multiple personality disorder or something. And then Ruby went missing. She doesn't know. No one knows. Marie's been gone since 11.30 last night. Disappearances. Forest. I have to go. Now. I tear out the door and pull up at the nearest bus stop, which just so happens to have a bus parked in front of it. I step to the opening doors, but just before I place a foot on the steps, the narrow entrance seems to squeeze at me from all sides. No, not now. I force myself forward, that is, I try to. My feet shuffle to a halt. The rumble of the bus's engine seems to spread through the pavement directly into my bones. Look kid, are you getting on or not? I'm working on it. My response is just as snappish as his question. Why can't I just put one foot in front of the other? I have more important things to worry about. I need to get to that forest. I've got a route to take, so the doors are closing in. I suck in a deep breath, close my eyes, and throw myself into the bus, shakily pushing my phone against the toll scanner. I don't open them even as I rush into the near seat, groping for a handhold. The doors close and the bus rattles to life, charging down the street. I should be fine. No, I would be fine under ordinary circumstances. If I was with my friends or if my nerves weren't on edge or if I wasn't worried about the disappearances. No, there's no use for wishful thinking. I had to keep myself under control. the murder forest. I stagger into the forest when my mind is still spinning. The forest is blocking me in on every side as I thrust through the beaten overgrowth. I'd always thought that the government was exaggerating when they didn't want to demolish this place due to bad luck. But now that I'm actually in the midst of it, I can see where they're coming from. I'm not a superstitious type. Never have been, never will be. I take what I see and smell and feel with my own senses. They say secondary, emotions are untrustworthy. There's nothing to rely on, not out here, where everything is wild and flourishing, full of garish coloring, worn textures. Some tree sap rubs off on the sleeve of my sweater. It slowly molds from red to green, to blue and black, like a chameleon made out of honey. That's not normal, is it? Yes, I wouldn't know what's normal around here. It's not exactly the place I would choose for a leisurely stroll. From the moment I entered this place, I was under the impression that I stepped into a world where the laws of physics are different. Gravity is heavier, the air is more resistant, Energy seems to sap away into nothingness in favor of being recycled. It's a ridiculous thought. My mind, which has had to cram an unfortunate number of facts about physics and geology and astronomy and biology, knows this. But why does such an irrational thought seem to be so appealing? The Islamic Force, a dense segment of arboreal terrain, it's been untouched for decades. When he saw what was growing, the solution seemed obvious, cut down a good part of it to allow room for new residential areas and corporate buildings. A rational idea, an agreeable idea. So they started to demolish with a team built of ordinary, competent individuals, ready to do what they've been doing for years. Except, when they entered the forest, everything went wrong. In the span of a single day, the group of demolition experts deteriorated into 
ragtag bunch of fleeing victims, each claiming the story more ridiculous than the last. A went crazy and killed B. The bulldozers became possessed and started trashing the equipment. Aliens dropped down from UFOs and lasered the charges. The thing was this. Only half of them had come back alive. Of those half, not one was declared sane. They were all sent to asylums where they wasted away until their death. It was the gossip of the town, the equivalent of an internet sensation, the Bermuda Triangle of Japan, with glorious entertainment. A lovely horror story to tell at slumber parties. A stock moral warning for the environmentalism. A feast of fodder for the tinfoil hat conspiracies. After all, humans are endlessly fascinated by the misery of others. Over time, the thrill died down. Nothing out of the ordinary was captured on footage. People stopped visiting the area. The Wrath of the Forest was just another urban legend. After I researched the event in middle school, after I found that it was a true story, it lurked constantly in the back of my mind. If something was just a group of trees, it couldn't hold that much power, could it? Shouldn't there have been at least one rational soul, someone with a better grip on reality? The only answer to that question is if there was really no way to withstand insanity. Whatever happened those decades ago, it drove 100% of a large group out of their minds. That's a definite success rate. What's to say it won't do the same here and now? I stumble around the broad trunk of a towering tree, my eyes roving through the gnarled basket weave of spindle branches. What am I looking for? Wait, what am I even doing? Why am I even here? I take a moment to close my eyes. Deep breath. Ground myself. What am I feeling? What am I smelling? What's that? I pause abruptly, scared to take another breath. Now I'm just being stupid, so I breathe deeply. The air is warm and thick, sliding down my throat with a mix of taste of chocolate and iron. It leaves a sweet residue on the back of my tongue. Trap is the first word that comes to my mind, extracting a reflexive stab of panic. No trap. My fingers tremble as I reach out to the trunk to study myself. With the only land on some sticky, milky substance, I quickly pull away, but the tree emits a sickly slurp. Nothing to hold on to. No, I've got to keep calm. I've got to think. Someone, someone's depending on me. Who? Who's depending on? Shigure, Shigure wants me to- No, wait, someone needs my help. Someone- Rui. Rui has been gone since last year, yesterday, yesterday Rui was gone, and today Rui has gone, and she might be gone forever. You're alone. I roughly shake my head to dispel the fog in my mind. Rui's depending on me. If Rui was kidnapped, would she even be in the Isamu forest? Why am I? Oh, Shigure's task to investigate the forest? Everything's mixing up in my head. Shigure, kidnapping, Rui, forest... My foot suddenly collapses on something solid. It crushes beneath my feet, and a sweet vapor wafts to my nose. I sluggishly turn my gaze underfoot, lifting my shoe. Who? Did we step on a dead body? What? What the hell? Oh dear. Bones. Rui's bones stabbed into the ground like incense at a funeral. They open their mouths. They start laughing. Their crackles grate out my eardrums, freezing my veins from the inside out. Wait, wait, wait. No. I stomp at the bones. They fragment to pieces beneath my feet. The scent only intensifies until it clogs my nostrils. I'm not I'm not late. The bones melt twining and steaming into the earth. A 
a black bolt immersed in the caramel. They're gone. I'm free. I'm gone. It's okay. The bowl congeals into a humanoid figure and sludges over my shoes, dripping blood against my legs. We'll be fine. No. 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 No, damn it. I finally reach into the pool, flinging my arms, tearing it apart, and burns my hands into crumbling residue. I continue to stubbornly wrench at it. It's okay. Get out. Finally, the pool shreds into bits, merging along with my arms. My hands rematerialize. Fingers are stained with blood. No. You'll be fine. No. I shake my hands rapidly. The liquid stubbornly clings to my nails. I rub them against the grass, but even the ground stabs into my fingers. The blood refuses to budge. What's wrong? Shut up, shut up. You're too late. I'm not... I'm not late. I'm not... I can't handle this. Not anymore. I sink to the ground, overwhelmed with darkness. Bones dance before my eyes. Hey. I jerk up, vision eerily clear. I'm still shaking uncontrollably, with my mind blurry. No blood, no bones, no pool. What? What just happened? What are you doing here? It's a police officer! Is a police officer the murderer? I have a new suspect. I jump on the sharp voice, which is coming from a stern policeman standing a few meters away. My first reaction is relief. Another human being. No more than that, a police officer. Someone who can get me out of here. And I notice that his fingers are gliding over the electric baton at his waist. I quickly raise my hand, trying to pull myself together. He sounds like sizzling. Yama Ishimoto. ID? It takes a moment to recollect the digits through the haze of my thoughts. Five. Five, three, two, four, eight, nine, five, six, four, three, six, three, four. I mean, 532-4895-634. The man pauses, his eyes roving across the inside of his site code, probably matching my name and image to the Isamu database. I managed to catch a glimpse of the badge pinned to his chest, which bears Police Captain Katsu Kobayashi in bold, clear cut letters. A police captain? Here? Why is the police captain in the forest? You're an academy student. A sudden prompt snaps me back to reality. Yes. What are you doing here? I work to speak past the lump in my throat. I'm looking for a friend. His eyes clearly darken in suspicion. In the Asami forest? Yes. I want to bite back to say something sarcastic, but I'm barely capable of registering sound, much less replying with witty repartee. Katsu taps at his psycho, turning to speak to someone over the intercom. Yeah, kid, academy student. 532-4895634. Not hostile so far. Understood. He whips back to me, hands still hovering over his baton. I instinctively shrink backwards, trying to stay coherent. What's your friend's name? 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 Oh. Shigure. Shigure Inomoto? No. 
No, really, really Hayata. What's wrong with me? She really, she's been missing since yesterday night, 11.30 p.m. I thought, I saw the news and I thought, I think coming out of my mouth sounds stilted and contrived. My hands are shaking on the top of my head. How do you know Shigari and Nomoto? I... I don't... I do... I know her. Yes, so I gather. How? Case... Witness... Something... He touches the tip of the psycho, then frowns. You are not listed as a witness for any cases within the past five years. Much less under Shigure Inamoto. Panic bubbles in my stomach and it out of my mouth. Assistant. I'm her assistant. You can't even ask her. What business would Inamoto have in the Islamic forest? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Just stop spittle. Look, Yami Ishimoto. I am not sure. You're aware of your position. Given the circumstances of this morning, you are currently our primary suspect. Um, what? He snorts in disbelief, but pauses, his attention suddenly turning to his psycho. Superintendent, I believe that... Unverified, hence my suspicions. Remarkable. Understood, sir. He looks to me, eyebrows set and clear distrust. Inamoto has substantiated your claim. You are cleared. Regardless, you must vacate the premises. My head still my head is still spinning. There is so little that I understand. I married suspect this morning vacate the premises? What's going on? Simply put, you are standing in the midst of a crime scene without clearance, so get out. My body acts before my mind does. I instinctively rush away without a word, walking on autopilot. Crime scene? The forest was a crime scene? And I was in the middle of it? Did they find a body? Are the disappearances actually murders? It's only when I return to the city that I come to my senses. Rui's still missing. Furthermore, I didn't even learn anything useful from the Asamu Forest. Nothing close to what Shigure insinuated I might learn. If anything, I just made myself a top suspect on the police's list. And what the hell did I experience in that forest? It wasn't a lapse. In fact, I would never come across something like that before. The closest thing to what you might like in it is being high or drunk. I don't have a proper frame of reference for either, so what could have caused it? Aside from that, there's something far more important, Rui's absence. Could she really have been kidnapped? Could, could she be dead and I wouldn't even know about it? The fragments of my vision in the forest return to me, but I shake them away. No, no, she has to be fine. Jump as my phone suddenly trills. Despite my calm process of thought, it seems I'm, I'm still on edge. It's Akira. Top of the morning, Commander. We just returned to home base. Thought you'd like to know. A sigh of relief passes my lips. Rui's fine, no disappearance, no kidnapping, no murders. Well, that was anticlimactic. So, that there are kidnapping murders, it's just not really. So, where has she been? Why didn't she tell me that she was okay? Hey. Okay. Let's. 
up with all the spam. I told you I'd be gone all morning. Anger burns through my veins and I jam my phone in my pocket. Spam, does she know what I've gone through this morning? One little text, that's all I need. I'm fine, I'm okay even. Go back to sleep, Yama. No, it's not her fault. She did say she would be gone all morning. Damn, I'm a wreck. Now what? Reporting with the academy rooftop. A location ping from Miki? Did we arrange something? I don't recall any recent conversations with her. Uh, that must be the explanation. Sorry, that was meant for Yahiko. was just a mistake. Wait a minute, Yahiko? Why is she meeting Yahiko on the school rooftop? No way, it can't be. They've only known each other for, what, four days? And Misaki? Misaki has more common sense than that. I need to get to that rooftop. I swipe on the entrance gate and hurried sprint later. I break onto the rooftop, placing myself for horror. Instead, I find no not a confession scene, thank goodness. A mass of people are scattered about. Some are donned in festive clothing, while others are clad in black jackets emblazoned with crew on the back. Among them, a stocky man yells through a large megaphone. Hey, the book candles are too high. Get me a scram, and you. Where the hell are you putting that sandbag? It's a sea stand, you idiot. Put it on the other way. Sorry, director. Shizune, where the hell is your kimono? I need you fitted right now. Is this a film set? Why are they shooting here on the school's rooftop of all places? Intrigued, I decided to take a closer look. Judging by the setup, it seems they're trying to replicate. A festival. Booths are aligned straight down the pathway. A number of people, mostly women of varying ages, mingling amongst each other, are dressed in traditional kimonos. A brilliant flash of bright purple catches my eyes in a sea of dull color. From the distance, she almost looks like. The views are set, sir. Right. Everyone, take your positions. Camera. Rolling. Sound, beating, slate, has a high scene one, Yamaku take one, marker, action. The cameras focus on a girl dressed in purple. As a group of girls surround her, chat animatedly. She remains disconnected from the conversation, her head is lowered as they trip from booth to booth. Cut, perfect. The crew relaxes into quiet murmurs as the director reviews the footage. I strike closer to the set for a better view. It's Misaki. It's actually Misaki. However, as soon as I blink, she disappears among the sea of actors and crew members. It all happened so quickly, I wonder if I merely saw an illusion. Where is Kusunoki? We, we haven't been able to contact him for a while, sir. What do you mean, haven't been able to contact him? He's the other talent. His, his manager's not picking up. I need Kusunoki for the next shot. Get me Kusunoki. Y yes, sir. Uh -huh. I almost jump at the sudden voice behind my ear. Misaki is holding a bottle of water. Her eyes wide with surprise. This is no solution. Moment, my mouth runs dry at just how stunning she looks. You yeah, look nice. Fantastic, the paradigm of river opens right here. Um, thank you. What are you doing here? 
Huh? Here? Where? Where am I? Oh. Uh, yeah. About that. It's not like I can just say that I thought she was confessing to Yehiko. Where's Yehiko? I don't know. I tested him a while ago, but it doesn't seem like he's coming. He mentioned that he wants to become a model. So I thought he would be interested in watching a film shoot. Oh, oh, that's really thoughtful of her. It makes me wonder how big Misaki is. It's not like she gets recognized on the street or sworn by hordes of fans. But small timers don't just pick up TV commercials, do they? Hey, good boy. A crew member runs up to me and stoops over clearly on the breath. You wanna be a star? Ooh. He claps his hands together, bowing to me. Please, I'm begging you. My job is writing on this one. You can contact our actor and we need to shoot the scene during noon and our permit ends today, so we can't shoot tomorrow. If I can't find someone, the director will kill me. Saki is this guy for real. He seems pretty serious. Please. You look hygienic and charismatic, and your proportion looks like it's good for Kusunoki's. Besides, it seems like you know Kazuhaya, so there'll probably be chemistry in before. He's making this incredibly ridiculous suggestion sound like a logical solution. If you ask me, I say you should try it. You were always good at acting, weren't you? It's not like I'm a professional, Miki. Come on, it'll be fun. Uh, I don't know. Should I really? <gasps> I have a choice. I have a choice. That seems to have some sort of a actual effect in the game. And like the amusement part. Which was the illusion of choice. Alright. So we finally get a choice that matters. Um, because we are going after a Kira, we are going to do this one. Because I feel like this one is for our people. So, here we go. Sorry. I really can't. Are, are you sure? The man seems genuinely terrified for this. I feel a pang of guilt. But I might actually be doing him a favor. I've had ended up ruining the commercial. Well, I won't force you. He slinks away, I give Misaki an apologetic smile. Oh, you're no fun. You would have looked great in a kimono. She says this playfully, but it's clear she's disappointed. Well, we'll be able to find another replacement. I'm sure we will, somehow. Hopefully. Okay, have a good shoot, Misaki. Thank you. She sweeps back to the film scene, leaving me to my own devices. For a moment, I'm tempted to stick around and take a look at the filming process, but I decide against it. The last thing I need is for another reason for the police to suspect me. I exit the rooftop and head to the school courtyard to cool my head. Okay, we will stop here for today. Um, let's see what happens in the courtyard next time. I am Taylor Cat. Thank you for watching. If you haven't liked, comment, and subscribe, have a wonderful morning, evening, afternoon. <laughs>